See, amidst the pandemic crisis outbreak, uh, we decided to have this web uh, uh, interview series, uh, bringing together all the leaders of um, the parties uh, of the radical left in Europe, or at least the leading personalities of the radical left parties, and uh, posing to them questions uh, under the same thematic axis, uh, that started from the pandemic as a topic, but also continuing to the state of affairs in Europe, um, uh, the, the, the respective national context and the balance of forces in this particular context, and so on and so forth. Uh, it was a year ago, the, the rollout uh, took place in May 2020, and the last interview being broadcast uh, was being broadcast in November 2020. Um, the format of the web uh, interview series uh, was kept unchanged uh, from the first one until the last one. And uh, during all 11 interviews, we had one guest and two interviewees accompanied by uh, two moderators. In this uh, point, I want to thank uh, uh, Walter Bayer because he was the person behind this very idea. It was his idea, uh, the whole uh, project. And he was uh, one of the basic, uh, basic interviewers and he contributed a lot to the, um, uh, the thematic scheme of the interviews. Um, so uh, our guests were leftist politicians uh, who either have a role in the leadership uh, or the coordination of the party uh, or represent European entities such as the part of the European left or the left group in the European Parliament. Um, of course, you can find, as uh, Roberto said, uh, the whole series in our website and also in our uh, YouTube channel. An important note here, you, you may uh, got it from uh, the film before, uh, the language of the interviews was not the same. Some uh, speakers did uh, choose to speak on their mother language, while some others spoke in English. And this, of course, make a difference on when you try to analyze the discourse uh, of a person. Um, so the, this study, uh, which is like a snapshot of the discourse of the left-wing uh, leaders in Europe, arose as an idea after the completion, or completion of this series. And when we realized that we had uh, um, a material in our hands, namely the leaders of the left-wing parties in Europe, presenting their views, their perceptions, their ideas, their programmatic lines, um, in a series of thematic axes and questions similar to all of them. Um, and also all the whole series had a European dimension, which is of a particular interest of us uh, as a European network. Um, so these are the thematic uh, axes that we presented in these interviews. It's of course the management of the COVID pandemic crisis, an important note here is that the series of interviews took place in the middle of the pandemic crisis. So uh, some of the interviews uh, took place in the first wave of the pandemic, while some others on the so-called second wave of the pandemic. So keep in mind that the politicians who, uh, who we host in the second wave of the pandemic had the privilege, the assets, so to say, to have a wider perspective on the COVID pandemic crisis. Uh, so we discuss about the economic impact of the crisis, uh, about the European integration process in general, related with the response of Europe in this crisis, uh, the challenge of the climate crisis and uh, all the discussion regarding the Green New Deal and the just transition and the, the role, of course, of the left in Europe and the question of alliances of the European left, the question of cooperation, etc. Um, yeah, here uh, you can find uh, all the people that we interviewed when but they, they, their specific affiliation, uh, if they are coordinators, if they are presidents of the parties, uh, if they are co-presidents, etc. Um, we need to make an important annotation here that we cannot imply that digging into the views and the perceptions of um, a party leader, uh, this can offer us the whole picture of uh, what the party he she represents is uh, because a party is obviously a vivid organization and embodies currents and tendencies and conflicts and contradictory mm. strategies that may change uh, uh, like in a very short term, even in a very short term. Uh, however, 
So this is not a study that aims to present uh, in its fullness the radical left parties in Europe. I believe, for example, that the, bo the book that uh, Connie, Danai, and Tamiki have edited uh, can offer us a, a, a deeper perspective on that. Uh, however, we do believe that the party structures, uh, the bodies, as well as the leadership of a party are the crystallization of the current balance uh, of power that flows to a concrete uh, strategic direction. Hence, we consider a party leader statement as demonstrative of the party's language and imprint, at least as a, like a snapshot. Um, I, yes, as I told you before, when we say leader, we may mean very different things like president, general secretary, coordinator, etc. So the first uh, pillar, the first thematic axis we discussed with them was the pandemic and the health system in Europe. And there was a common understanding uh, among them with regards to the perception of the pandemic as related to existing crises. Uh, they all describe the pandemic crisis using two concepts, either that of the pandemic as an accelerator of previous existing problems and subsurface crises, or that of the pandemic as the result, among others, of current crises that would inevitably emerge. They all agree and made quite bold statements about the connection of the sanitary crisis also with the forthcoming uh, economic and social crisis, but also with the climate crisis. Um, the, regarding the, um, the healthcare system that we have discussions starting from the national healthcare system of its politician, uh, but also uh, trying to draw conclusions about the European healthcare systems. Um, the vast majority of the politician access uh, the health system of the country as insufficient, deteriorate, deteriorated with serious lack of public funding and uh, public control. And uh, the only exception comes from Katarina Martins from Portugal and from Wojciech Filip from Czech Republic. Uh, Katarina Martins evaluates the health system of Portugal as one of the most effective uh, health systems in Europe. As, and she, cannot, she could not draw a conclusion in general about the European healthcare systems. And the same applies to Wojciech Filip, who praised the national health system in uh, Czech Republic, highlighting the universal access of the citizens in it and connecting it with the important uh, role of the state. Here you can find uh, some uh, quotes of uh, politicians we interviewed on this topic. They use the opportunity of this uh, thematic access to demonstrate a comprehensive critique towards neoliberalism and the uh, rationale of the free market. And uh, a quite idiomatic example that some of them brought to illustrate the European Union's uh, agitating failure of, on this regard is the incapacity back then to produce face masks. And uh, you can see here that two of the politicians have pretty much described this with the same um, words, um, the incident with a face mask. Um, regarding the, um, okay, it is obvious that uh, historically the left has strongly uh, supported and advocated for a substantial uh, welfare system, uh, public spending and democratic control of services and public goods. <laughs> The radical left, as we found out in this interview, develops the following argumentation. The failure of the welfare state did not originate from the public intervention dynamic, uh, but rather from the decay that neoliberalism forced. Uh, all the interviews emphasize on the strengthening of the welfare state, the public services, and the labor rights of the healthcare workers in particular. Um, however, uh, Though all speak strongly about the public services and the public control, only one speaker, Arnaldo Tegi from the Basque Country, uh, took heart, as I say, and moved beyond that. So Arnaldo Tegi made a very respective remark with regards to the control of the healthcare, and it's quite interesting, since at least in a discursive level, it appears more radical. Um, he says we need a healthcare system that will not be under the control of the public administration, but rather under the control of the people, the citizens. This is a good time to say it. In times of crisis, neoliberals become socialists by asking money from the public. Now our values 
have been uh, highlighted. We dare to say that such a perspective is closer uh, to the tradition of the radical left, while the support of the public character of the health system is undeniable. Uh, part of the left-wing agenda, settling on this demand is closer to what the social democratic governments have shown us. The radical left aims uh, to create breaks, it is what also Danai said in her presentation, uh, breaks in the current system that could produce social transformation, though uh, thus I do believe that Arnaldo Tegui here appears more consistent on the radical left discourse and um, tradition in this matter. So uh, now moving on the climate crisis and the demand for just and ecological transition. During the recent years, the radical left parties, as well as the party of the European left as such, and the left group in the European Parliament, have made the climate crisis and the demand for just ecological transition a topic of a paramount importance. Um, notwithstanding that they all perceive climate crisis as a high priority, we do observe that the politicians coming from countries of the Western Europe have more uh, refined arguments and proposals in comparison with those coming from countries of the European South. This can be explained by the fact that they face the Green parties in the partisan competition, while this is not an actuality in the countries of the European South, Spain, Greece, Italy, and Portugal. Here you can find uh, some quotes of uh, the politicians. We can say that we do not observe any divergences in the discourse of the politicians when it comes to the climate crisis, the just transition and the ecological transformation. We have one strong exception, the chairperson of the left party in Czechia, who did not mention even once uh, the topic of the climate crisis and or the need for social and ecological transformation. And we may assume that this, yeah, that his party is still attached to the support of the automobiles industry uh, of the country as the big provider of uh, the jobs uh, for the national working class. And this goes in, uh, in the opposite direction of the contemporary demands uh, and analysis of the radical left uh, parties in Europe. Um, moving to the question of uh, Europe, Without doubt, the question of Europe was uh, um, one uh, was the most critical for us. The process also for, of European integration and the relation between the European Union and the respective member states. Uh, we try to be central part for the uh, interviews, not only due to the fact that we as transform um, our European entity, but also because we wanted to give our guests the space to speak from a European perspective. Uh, we said it also before in the previous panel that we know that uh, the politicians of the left-wing parties uh, do care more about the national uh, context and think more nationally than uh, European, even though uh, we Claim, we declare ourselves uh, internationalists. Um, it is, um, yeah, it is quite often to see national strategies that, albeit they could be, um, they could be unified in the European. Never this in the European level. This never happens. Uh, furthermore, the question of Europe, and in particular the stance of the left towards EU, has been a thorny issue for the left-wing uh, parties in Europe during the last years especially after the 2015 experience of Syriza and government. But we could say at this moment that the divergences have been mitigated and are not that sharp as they used to be. Uh, we do observe some differences on the argumentation of the politicians regarding the EU, but only when it comes to how they characterize it as a project. So um, uh, how the European Union uh, and for which reasons uh, was founded. Um, here you can find some uh, quotes of politicians regarding the EU. When the discussion evolves around concrete policies uh, and demands that we, we now, uh, as left-wing political parties, must, be, must put forward, um, we dare to say that we, wit we witness no discrepancy at all. The vast majority of the interviews consider that a deterioration of the project of European integration would be a backlash and fewer would be a backlash and will fuel uh, the nationalism all around Europe and uh, feed, of course, the, the far-right strategies. Though someone could think that the party leaders coming from countries of the European South who suffered the most during the years of austerity would be the most Eurosceptic in this period, this is not the case. 
And uh, the only exception comes uh, from Portugal, uh, from Cantarina Martins, uh, who appears as more Eurosceptic. But again, I can say that um, her narrative um, regarding European integration is a bit uh, vague. She appears quite uh, Euro critical, but uh, she doesn't present a different uh, different programmatic line or uh, she, do she doesn't put forward different demands than all the others. Um, <laughs> Here you can find, um, yes, this is a difference, sorry. This is a difference regarding a very concrete policy. When uh, we had um, a qu we had a question uh, regarding uh, uh, the measures of the European institutions in that period, and uh, this is a question about the Corona bonds, and we see that there are quite different approaches. The first one is uh, Katja Keeping from the Linke Germany, who says that we strongly support. Corona bonds. Why Katarina Martins from Portugal say that we don't find Corona bonds a sufficient solution and actually criticize them. Um, the views of the interviewee of the, of the politicians on the recovery plans of the EU and the European strategy to tackle the foreseen economic uh, crisis are quite diverse. They also have a common understanding on the inadequacy of the plans of the European institutions. And the vast majority of them express their fears on, of an EU continuing in the same uh, um, mode as previous, you know, this back to normal that we used to say, back to austerity, uh, etc. Uh, they believe that um, this crisis is an alarming uh, moment for the future of the EU. And uh, yes, we observe divergences both in the valuation of the concrete recovery plans of the European institutions and, the, and in the very content and the direction of uh, these particular policies. Um, some interviews focus on the insufficient of the plans, while some others focus on the direction of these plans and the interests that they aim to serve. Uh, for some, the problem is the amount of money uh, uh, presented by the European institutions, uh, while for some others, the, the, the direction and to, to which hands this money actually will end up. Um, here we have, it's this one. Um, okay. Um, the, we have three quotes uh, quite interesting uh, from Katarina Martins, Katia Keeping, and Manon Obrin uh, that uh, actually describe uh, how the state needs to take back control and how the state needs actually to control the European money uh, that will be um, uh, uh, sent to big businesses, etc. All the quotes reveal an interesting um, facet of the left wing discourse because all three quotes describe actually the process of nationalization but they do not use the word nationalization uh, it is um it seems that uh, the left wing leaders nowadays is quite they are quite reluctant on use this word because it has a very strong meaning a very historical weight so to say and uh, though they do describe this process, they do not put forward in the public discourse this word. Um, however, we do believe that even to describe the process, it is quite important because um, the left wing uh, actually nowadays make proposals that do have a transformative power and uh, give control uh, to the working classes. And, um, now in the last part it's the part about uh, european integration we discussed a lot in the previous session also about that um i, I want to start from uh, the question regarding clementino tan if uh, she expresses the view of your part and what uh, pablo said we had also conducted another study in 2019 prior to the european elections when we had all these different european scenarios slash platforms so we had the party of the european left we have dm25 and we had the um, 
transnational project. I don't remember now the name of Jean-Luc Melanson. Uh, yeah, yes, the plan B. Um, so we wanted to see uh, what are the difference actually of this project. And we did realize that if you dig into the programmatic lines of this project, you witness no such difference actually. And it's true, as Pablo said, uh, that um, as uh, Melanson and um, his organization has uh, softened uh, the discourse towards the EU. This has happened to all the political forces of the left that were close to the um, Plan B uh, two, three years ago. So now uh, we witness, okay, critical perspectives towards the EU, but slightly differentiated. Nobody questions the European project in the sense of demanding an exit of his or her country, or in the sense of asking for a dissolution of the EU. Uh, we have differences only, as I said before, when it comes to the very foundations of the EU. Some people said that the very dogma of the EU, the dogma that was built was you know, liberalism, etc. while some others, for example, Arnold Peggy, and this was quite interesting, um, because I, I was uh, thinking that he would be more critical, but actually said that the EU was created uh, in a context, uh, the context was so different. And he also quoted uh, Spinelli and, uh, you know, the fathers of the European project, highlighting that it was a whole different idea than uh, how it has ended up today. Uh, it seems that the split that had generated the radical left in 2015, 2016, so after the series I experienced, is no longer, is no longer relevant uh, for the left in Europe. Um, the most Eurocritical discourse is found, I said this also before, in Katarina Martis. She's exception, even among the countries of the European South. Nonetheless, her programmatic line towards the EU is vague. So we, uh, since he, her words are, so, are a bit more harsh than the words of the others, uh, we cannot say precisely what the difference um, uh, does the Bloco present in terms of the stance towards the EU. Um, yeah, here a quote of her, I don't know what European integration means. Um, so we can say that the hard line between the Eurosceptic and the pro-European radical left is found only as the, the mainstream, the, the, the most traditional hard line, the European North vs all the others. Um, and it seems that the less Eurosceptic a politician appears, the more critical is towards the state. Because um, the ones that appeared uh, more Eurocritical actually um, made a division between the state and the European Union. So the, the, the whole criticism of them was oriented on the European Union, but on, not on the state, not on the national governments, the right wing governments, the authoritarian governments. Um, and the second remark that the closest the party is uh, to parliamentary politics or main opposition politics or even governmental experiences, the more pro-European is. I think it was Danai also who said that before. Uh, in general, they all have to say something about, uh, you know, the another Europe is possible. They all have to say that we, not, we want another Europe. I just chose some quotes, but they all had a quote similar to that. Uh, they describe uh, Europe other than that. And they, I mean, they put themselves inside, to me, a pro-European uh, discourse. Um, thank you so much. I mean, the study is quite extended. It will be in our website in, um, in any paper form.